Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Peter Harrop of ID TechX, the analysts. I'm going to share with you today some of the findings from our report, Electric Vehicles in Construction, Agriculture and Mining. That's a picture of a robot tractor. It's a Concept One. John Deere's got its own bigger one. The world is changing. This is the report. It's details are at the end of this presentation and that's how to get in contact why the three together well construction agriculture and mining increasingly have many companies doing at least two of them in terms of the vehicles and several of the giants john deere cat cnh industrial are doing all three and that is the trend because they have a great deal in common where we're headed, well, it's all fairly obvious stuff, automation, fewer people, less contamination, improved efficiency uh, to make more better returns and more independence uh, of the different um, functions. And um, some of the forces brought to bear are sustainability, organic farming. I won't read all that. At the bottom, very significant um, herbicides, fungicides, insecticides are on the way out as we uh, try to avoid poisoning our rivers and our, uh, our sea and indeed people. Um, so in the box up there, there's the commonalities of electric, autonomous, autonomous fewer staff and um, small robots in agriculture. A lot of them are going to be solar and never plug in and others will have portable uh, electricity supplied, zero emission uh, to the fields as required. Uh, but there are actually small robots also coming uh, to some extent in mining and construction. So big commonality and you see the others there and they're all using electric drones as well. One thing that's really critical is, uh, for instance, a mine needs may need 200 megawatts, a great deal of electricity, it's like a town. And um, how are you going to make electricity? There's no point in dreaming about electrics if you're not addressing that. And uh, to put it bluntly, there's a very great opportunity with water power in rivers uh, and in the sea. Many mines are under the sea and many farms and mines are by rivers and so on uh, uh, and construction sites. And so modules of all those, the people who make these uh, mining and agricultural and construction vehicles uh, often make uh, diesel gen sets as well. They should dump those, uh, they are for losers, and the zero gen sets based on these modules are what they should be offering to leverage what they do. The types of development, big opportunities for small companies in Britain, the small robot company has Tom, Dick and Harry managed by the computer Wilma. And these are different uh, robot vehicles that do put in the seeds where seeds have not germinated. They inspect, they survey, they kill the weeds by lasers or punching them to death uh, and uh, so on. So there are many developments across the world in these small robots in agriculture. In mining, uh, we're moving to a world where there's much more difficult mining having to take place in much more poisonous environments. So it's no surprise that in Canada, uh, the first fully unmanned mine is fully operational this year. And seafloor mining is going to use wave power and tidal power and so on to create zero emission electricity. And even there, uh, drones up in the air that generate electricity for processing on the ship that takes the uh, material. Uh, there's open pit mines, of course, there's mountain quarries. Uh, sometimes the vehicles coming down the mountain with the rocks don't need to plug in because they can go back empty with the electricity they generated. Uh, Tesla Cybertruck is being bought by mines because it's a superb general purpose vehicle instead of having purpose-made ones. And uh, there's a whole range of um, vehicles in the fully automated mines that can cost uh, seven or eight million dollars each and they act uh, ro robotic and um, 
uh, zero emission and they can regenerate electricity to some extent. Uh, this is the report again, a little more detail. Go to the website for more. And this is us. Uh, we continue to expand. We have about 15 people at PhD level across the world who can, uh, many of them, interview in local languages. And we hope we can assist you. I hope you found that interesting. Thank you and goodbye.